Long before Uzbekistan was called Uzbekistan, this land was home to ancient civilizations. The Sogdians in Samarkand and Bokhara, the Khoresmians, and the Bactrians in the south shaped the region. They built walled cities, irrigated fields, and trading hubs that connected Persia, India, and China. The Silk Road ran straight through here, making these cities some of the wealthiest and most cosmopolitan in the ancient world. With the Arab conquest in the 8th century, Islam spread across the region, blending with local traditions. By the 9th and 10th centuries, cities like Bokhara became centers of science, poetry, and philosophy, producing scholars such as Avicenna and Al-Biruni. From the 6th century onward, Turkic tribes like the Karluks and Oghuz settled here, mixing with the older Iranian population. Their languages and traditions took root, laying the foundation for modern Uzbek identity. In the 13th century, Genghis Khan's Mongols swept across the land. Many Mongol tribes stayed, eventually adopting Turkic speech and Islam, further shaped the ethnic fabric of the region. In the early 16th century, Uzbek tribes under the Shaybanids swept into Transoxina, uniting the land under their rule. Over time, powerful Khanates emerged, the Khanate of Kiva, the Khanate of Kokand, and the Emirate of Bokhara. These states balanced nomadic traditions with the heritage of settled cities, and their rulers kept alive the cultural brilliance of the region, even as Central Asia became increasingly divided. For this video, I gathered the raw DNA of 12 Uzbeks from Khorezm from the Adderplus.ho dataset. Their Bronze Age breakdown reveals that the dominant component in the ancestry is the Bactrian Bronze Age component, followed by the East Eurasian component acquired from Turks and Mongols, and lastly followed by Sintashta, which is the Proto-Indo-Iranian component. A Stone Age Kpatam run reveals that around 18% of Uzbek ancestry is Eastern hunter-gatherer derived. 32% comes from the Iranian Neolithic farmers and Caucasus hunters, 21% comes from Anatolian farmers, and finally 28% comes from East Asians. I ran these samples through my trait predictor tool for DNA analysis. Here is their average predicted phenotype. The most common Y lineages observed were R1A and J2A, both lineages associated with Iranic peoples. The most common predicted phenotype was Turanid, but other phenotypes such as Indo-Iranid and even Proto-Nordid were also found among them. The most common predicted eye color was light brown, but the significant minority of samples had lighter eye colors such as blue or blue with an amber center. The most common predicted hair color was brown, with light and dark brown being equally common. Blonde hair was uncommon, but one sample did score dark blonde as its predicted hair shade. Skin colors ranged from light brown to pale white. Hair textures ranged from straight to kinky with straight hair being most common. Greek and snub nose shapes were equally common. Every sample had an above-average predisposition to male pattern baldness, which is characteristic of West Eurasians. The Uzbeks had high odds of autism. When it comes to lactose persistence, their results indicate a tendency to be lactose intolerant. They had lower empathy and high odds of allergies. The Uzbeks had average odds of type 2 diabetes, high odds of atrial fibrillation, high odds of cardiovascular issues, and high odds of syncope. The Uzbeks had average odds of Tourette's, average tendency to depression, and low odds of bipolar type 1. The Uzbeks did not have a predisposition to polycythemia vera based on J, I, K2 genotypes and had average odds of Alzheimer's. Not a single sample had autoimmune risks based on the HLA gene panel. This is typical for non-European populations. The Uzbeks also had low odds of hemoglobin E disease. The Uzbeks had high odds of blue-yellow colorblindness based on their OPN1SW genotypes. They had high levels of vitamin D, high levels of LDL cholesterol, which is bad, and low levels of HDL cholesterol, which is also bad. Most samples carried risk variants for rare conditions. The most common conditions to carry rare risk variants for were eosinophilic esophagitis, spina bifida, exfoliation glaucoma, and Parkinson's disease. The majority of samples belong to blood groups A and B. You can purchase their genomes along with my tools and services from the link in the description.